All right, so part two, we're looking at the, these are power reduction formulas. So if you notice on the left, these are all squared. On the right, they are no longer squared. Now you can look in the book and it'll show you how to solve to find these. And a lot of it is just using the cosine two theta formulas and back solving and a creative substitution. Um, this is useful in calculus when you're trying to do the antiderivative of things. Sine squared, not such a nice thing to do an antiderivative on. One minus cosine two theta all over two, though, you can do a nice substitution like and do the antiderivative. So just putting it out here, like we don't use these as much except for that one special case. So you don't want to like have these memorized so much as remember they exist. And this here is another classic example that you will see in Cal 2. So write an equivalent expression not containing powers greater than one. So we're going to write an ex equivalent expression for cosine to the fourth. So my power reduction formula is up here for cosine squared. So I'm going to split cosine to the fourth here into cosine squared times cosine squared. You could write cosine squared squared. It just looks weird. And now I'm just going to 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2. Now, if we wanted to get technical, done. I did the thing. Realistically, if you were actually going to have to use this, you do need to multiply it out. So we'll go ahead and do that. So the half and the half, I'm just going to write up front as a one fourth. And then I'm just going to put a bracket and just do the one plus cosine two theta times one plus cosine two theta. So that would be one plus cosine two theta plus another cosine two theta plus cosine squared two theta. Grr. So we're going to have to use it again. So that means web work would not take this because it wasn't just a sum and difference of the lower powers because we do have a hidden squared term in there. All right. So I'm just going to keep the one fourth. We could distribute it through, but whatever. So we have one plus two cosine two theta plus, so cosine squared two theta So if I sneak 2 theta in here, it would be 2 times 2 theta here. So cosine squared 2 theta is the same as 1 plus cosine of 4 theta all over 2. And that ridiculous thing is done. It's a sum and difference. I'm only multiplying by number. I could multiply through with that. Um, I could split the fraction so it's 1 half plus cosine 4 theta over 2, and then combine the 1 and the 1 half times the 3 fourths. It's, you know, silly things. All right, and the other formula we have here is half angle formulas. So if I have the sine or the cosine or the tangent that sets up a triangle for me, and I want to know what the sine, cosine, or tangent of the half angle is. These are my formulas. Now there is a plus or minus in these formulas. So when we did two theta, the formula actually takes care of the plus or the minus for you. But when we do the half angles, it does not. But if I know where theta is, which quadrant, I can figure out where half of theta will be, because it will be reduced to one quadrant. 
So here it says, find sine of 15 degrees using a half angle formula. Well, 15 times two is 30. So this is really saying, find the sine of 30 over two using the half angle formula. So this will be plus or minus big square root of one minus Cosine of alpha is 30 all over 2. So 15 is in quadrant 1. So we are going to use the positive, not the negative. So the cosine of 30 degrees. All right, so 30 degrees is our long side is adjacent, short side is opposite, so the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to put that in here, kind of cry a little. The square root of 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 all over 2. And we could type that out. I'm just going to think of this as times one half. So it'd be one over two. Minus the square root of three over four. It is very tempting to say, oh, I can split the square root. No, you cannot split the square root across addition or subtraction. I'm sure there is some creative and ridiculous way. Well, let's do a little bit more. So one half is the same as two fourths. So I can write this as two minus the square root of three all over four. And I can break the square root across the division here. So we can get the square root of two minus the square root of three all over two. There might presumably be some way to make that not so ugly. In fact, there should be because we actually found the sine of 15 degrees in the previous section. And it had something with the square root of 6 and the square root of 2, not this weird big square root thing. I'm just going to leave it here. But they are equivalent. All right. And then this last one. We are told that alpha lies in quadrant 3. So let's start with that. So there's our alpha somewhere in there. And then the tangent of alpha is 8 for the opposite side, 15 for the adjacent side. Now, because this is in quadrant 3, the tangent is positive. But it is positive because both of these sides are negative. Now, if we're going to answer these things, we need to know the third side. So let's just whoop, sneak over here real quick. Negative 8 squared plus negative 15 squared equals c squared. So 64 plus 225 is 289 and so our c is 17 another pythagorean triple so this is just to make the sine cosine not super ugly all right so let's just go ahead and add that in our notes here the sine of alpha is negative 8 seventeenths and the cosine of alpha is negative 15 seventeenths. Now we do need to consider where will this angle go? So quadrant three is all the angles between, um, here we'll go ahead with degrees, 180 degrees 
and 270 degrees. So if I want to know where alpha over 2 is, I'm just literally going to divide everything by 2. And in an inequality, as long as you're multiplying or dividing by a positive number, this doesn't flip anything. So now this angle is going to be between 90 degrees and 135 degrees, which is quadrant 2. So alpha over 2 is in quadrant 2. Uh, in quadrant 2, our all students take calculus. Sine is positive. So I'm going to put a little plus by that. And then our other guys are negative. Now if the formula, well, they all had a plus or minus, didn't they? Yeah. All right. So I have my sine and my cosine. I've taken care of the plus or minus part of the formulas. Now we're just going to go plug in our things. So sine is 1 minus cosine alpha over 2 with the square root. All right. So I didn't write the plus or minus because we determined it was plus. 1 minus cosine was the negative 15 over 17. So this becomes plus positive. Uh, 17 over 17 plus 15 over 17 is 32 over 17. Divided by 2 is the same thing as times 1 half. So we get the big square root of 16 over 17. Um, which, I mean, we could simplify this to be 4 over the square root of 17. We could rationalize it. But I think 4 over the square root of 17 should also be good. <sighs> That would be the rationalized version. All right. Our cosine alpha over 2, we know is supposed to be negative. It's 1 plus the cosine of alpha all over 2. Negative big square root. 1 plus negative 15 over 17, all over 2. So 1 17 17 minus 15 17 is 2 17. This is 2 17 divided by 2 is the same as times 1 half. So we have the negative square root of 1 17th, which becomes negative 1 over the square root of 17, or negative root 17 over 17. Since they asked for all three, we could just do the sine over the cosine. And we're going to get negative 4. But let's go ahead and use the formula and make sure the formula gives us negative 4. Okay, but I don't like that first formula. So sine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. So sine was the negative 8 seventeenths. So let me... Yeah. Over 1 plus 
negative 15 seventeenths. So, I hate little fractions and big fractions, so I'm going to use a ninja trick. I'm going to multiply the whole big fraction by 17 over 17. So on top, we just have negative 8. On the bottom, we get 17 plus negative 15. So 17 plus negative 15 would be 2. So negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Negative, the way we first determined it should be. And it is equivalent to the sine over the cosine. All right. So homework on this should be relatively short and sweet. It's just about getting comfortable with the formulas and remembering they exist. Don't stress too much about these.